All right, today's video, I am talking about Gary Taubes and his new C nutrition science crusade. He created Gary Taubes. If you don't know him, he's the author of Good Calories, Bad Calories, which I read, uh, which with much enthusiasm back in 2008, 2009, somewhere in that time frame. Uh, I also read his book, Why We Get Fat and Case Against Sugar. He's a prolific writer. I'm, I'm going to give him that, but I, I basically think his entire hypothesis has failed and he refuses to recognize that. And I'm going to explain why. This is an article in Wired Magazine, the online edition, and it's about his, um, his nonprofit called NUSI or Nutrition Science Initiative that he created back in 2013, 2014, somewhere in that time frame. And he recruited funding from the John Arnold Foundation, and so, and then he elicited the support of researchers, particularly Kevin Hall, and I'll get to that in just a minute. But I don't buy his, oh, it launched in 2012, I'm sorry. I don't buy his whole um, hypothesis. Basically what he's saying is that the more carbs you eat, the more insulin your pancreas releases, and the more insulin you have in your bloodstream, the more energy goes into your cells and then insulin traps this energy in the cells it can't get the energy out of the cells and then you just keep on eating because you think that you're not being fed but you you have all of this excess energy trapped in your cells so at the end of good calories bad calories he's pretty emphatic the more carbs you eat the fatter we get all right so that's a pretty that's a pretty bold hypothesis to make he's saying that calories don't matter it's all about the carbs and i'm going to challenge that here he raised 40 million dollars from big name owners um to find the root causes of obesity his co-founder peter atia contended that nutritional science was inconsistent he's saying that obesity research are obesity researchers are stuck with this hypothesis they believe that obesity is a result of excess calories, right? It's just, it's it, the energy balance. They're bringing in too many calories, they're, expand, they're expending too little. I think a good question to ask, and this is like the holy grail of obesity research, is why are some people getting obese and others aren't? What's the difference? Is it genetics? Is it the environment? Is it the brain? That's what I contend, actually. Uh, some people get greater reward from food than others and if you experience a high level of reward when you eat you get fat because your brain keeps telling you to eat 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 because it feels good right it, re it it releases the right kind of hormones and neurotransmitters in your head uh let's see uh let's rehabbing the entire field blah 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 had lofty ambitions yes it did um in fact the once flush organization is nearly broke and all but gone it's been three years since it tweeted that that means 2015 uh two years since it had a real office and basically it's dead is what it's saying so why did this organization die i mean gary tobbs is a pretty good writer he got good support he got good funding you would think that if the hypothesis were correct it would have found something and it didn't and i think that's going to be the best part of this this video so let's see um, big fat lie, that was his big thing, blah, blah, blah. It goes into how it started. Okay, Tabs and Atia subscribe to a growing minority stance, dubbed the carbohydrate, insulin, or CI hypothesis that contends that obesity is caused by an excess of insulin driving energy in the fat stores. In other words, carbs make people fat. And Tabs is on record as saying that he doesn't eat any carbs. He eats eggs and bacon for breakfast. He really, he lives his word. I'll give him that. He, um... He really does believe that um, carbs make you fat, so he doesn't eat them. Um, he doesn't eat them himself. Okay, it would be one thing if he ate like a bowl of cereal every morning. So, oh well, give credit where credit's due. Let's see. So they were going to funnel money into a rigorous new set of studies while leaving scientists with the experimental independence, which was also a good thing. Um, but that was also its downfall too, and I'm going to show you how that happened. They brought on people who disagreed with them, like Kevin Hall, a senior investigator at National Institute of Health in Bethesda, Maryland, whose mathematical models predicted that a low-carb, low-insulin diet would have only a tiny impact on calorie burning, which is 
what I would predict too. It doesn't really matter if it's low fat or low carb, it's the calories that count. Let's see, so the EBCs or the Energy Balance Consortium, which was one of the first studies, would put 17 overweight men inside metabolic wards for two months. Think about that. Think about living inside a ward for two months where everything is tracked and you have people watching you. I don't, I don't know how they found these volunteers. That's what I would want to see. Um, I guess I would have to go look at the study itself and see how they recruited these people. That would be interesting. Who has two months to just live in a ward? If you're making $5,000 a month, that's going to cost you $10,000. Maybe that was part of the, the, uh, the program. Right? They would pay them their monthly salary so they could be tracked. But how boring. Uh, there was a study back in the 40s or 50s by Ansel Keys, and he got these young men, and he starved them to death, and he locked them in this um, room below the stadium at University of Minnesota. Imagine that, being starved to death, and you can't escape. That would have been really weird. <laughs> I don't know if I would do that. I don't know if I, if I have the result to do something like that, but I guess if it's good for science, then you can tolerate it. Anyway... Let's see, if it made them, okay, so feeding them precisely formulated meals and pricking and priding them to see what happened to their bodies on a low carb diet. So not only that, but they were eating formulated meals, which can't be that good. If it made them burn calories faster, a potential follow-up study would do the same test on a bigger group of people. So this was kind of like a pilot study. This wasn't even like the big, the big, the big test. Hall was skeptical that they would find anything, but he was assured by the terms of the contract and uh, Nusi would have no control over the pilot studies, public, um, published conclusions. Let's see. So they recruited Jeff Volek, who's also a low-carb guru, blah, blah, blah. Um, they published conclusions, noted a relatively small difference in, in energy expenditure. That didn't mean it was a failure. In fact, they succeeded in verifying the methodology. Okay, great. Uh, let's see. But when Hall presented the pilot's results in person to representatives from Nusi, in Bethesda, they were not so rosy-eyed. When Nusi saw the data, it began providing extensive critiques. And Talbot had issues with the researchers' conclusions and many of the studies' designs. Now, this is, this is I think, Talbot's downfall. He is very critical of obesity research and obesity researchers. He rejects their common beliefs. He rejects the whole energy balance. Um, paradigm. He rejects a lot of the research that's been done over the last 50 years, and he sees himself as this uh, this maverick journalist who saves the day. And because all of the researchers are stuck in this faulty paradigm, and we need a journalist um, from Oakland, California, to tell us the real truth. And I think that's what he's trying to convince us, but it's not working. And he's falling for the same traps. Instead of being this objective researcher and journalist he is very committed to this hypothesis he has a strong ideological bias and why wouldn't he he spent his entire career at least the last 15 years promoting this hypothesis and it's not true the evidence just isn't there he says he had issues with the researchers conclusions which fed participants a standard american diet for four weeks before switching them to an extremely low carb diet it was supposed to get them to a stable weight, but the subjects all lost weight even before they cut out carbs. Well, what does that tell you? It's not the carbs, right? They cut their energy intake. Duh. Um, Tops contended that this was because the standard diet didn't have enough refined sugary beverages. So now it's not the carbs and it's not the insulin. Now it's the, re it's the sugary beverages that's causing it. This is how you know a hypothesis is wrong. When the defenders say that every study is wrong, like it's not done exactly right. It wasn't done to the T. If they had done it this way and if they had done it um, perfectly, then it would have shown the results. Usually a good hypothesis will show up even in a poorly designed study. That's how good hypotheses are found. Um, when the defenders of these hypotheses say that the study wasn't done perfectly and that's why they didn't, they didn't, they didn't verify the hypothesis, then you know that um, the hypothesis is wrong. Let's see, Taub said it failed to get people an energy balance in the run-in period, and that was a necessary condition. 
keep in mind the people who conducted these trials are very competent researchers they understand methodology um, but Tobbs disagrees and in, uh, in his eyes all the pilot told them was that their method was flawed uh, at this point Nusi had spent five million dollars uh, blah 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 do good science we lived up to the current contract so now he's having problems with the researchers themselves uh, let's see at a meeting in front of John Arnold Nusi directors Taubes and Mark Friedman openly quarreled with Hall and his colleagues um, so now he doesn't like Kevin Hall the lead researcher great uh, let's see Nusi scrambled to fill Atia's position because he resigned things are looking good here Let's see. And then Nusi's yearly contract with the Arnold Foundation was replaced by a three-month contract. So now even the John Hall Foundation um, is pulling its money. Nusi shuttered its San Diego headquarters and became a virtual organization. Well, maybe that's what they should have done in the first place. Let's see. The remaining researchers continued to clash with Nusi. Um, let's see. Pilot results were finally published in an American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. Uh, let's see. And Hall said they received a lot of media attention because Hall said that the pilot, along with another study he conducted, basically falsified the carbohydrate insulin hypothesis. Boo hoo. The hypothesis failed. I just wish Taubes would move on and find something better to do instead of defending a hypothesis that clearly has not been verified and will never be verified. If it were a true hypothesis, it would have been verified by now. And just my personal experience and the personal experience of millions of others shows that when people cut energy intake, they lose weight. Um, and I've said this in previous videos. If you want to test that, drink olive oil and eat three sticks of butter a day. Or eat an entire tub of lard or peanut butter or something that's super low carb. And see what happens. I dare you. So... Anyway, by the end of the summer 2016, the Arnold Foundation decided not to fund the second phase. So now the Arnold Foundation is out. Uh, let's see. Tobbs continued to work with the Arnold Foundation to review some of the proposals. All right, blah, blah, blah. There's a lot of, like, soap opera here. Blah, blah, blah. It's still the same way it's added. Okay. It is still too soon to assess what Nusi has added to the nutrition science canon. The answer is nothing. Um, the results from the two outstanding Nusi back studies are due later this year. So this is this was written in summer of 18. So one of those studies um, came out in February in JAMA. And guess what? It found no difference between the low-fat and low-carb diet and no meaningful relationship between late weight loss and insulin secretion. I have added that study to the queue. I'll do an a article review on it in the future. Uh, let's see. From... Let's see, aren't surprised that Nusi hasn't sparked an epistemological revolution. I always forget what that word means. I think it has to do with methods of scientific research. Um, I'm, I'm not sure. From the outset, their approach was simply that knowledge will be enough to drive behavior. Uh, he'd love to see research dollars be spent instead on studying how to improve adherence to different eating strategies. In other words, behavior modification. Right, exactly. Friedhoff, a researcher at the University of Ottawa, uh, has argued that efforts to prove one diet is better than another do a disservice to patients. Right, exactly. There's no one way to lose weight. All right. Talos believes there still might be a need for Nusi in the future. No, there isn't. I say, to my, I say to my wife all the time, maybe I'm a quack. Maybe you are a quack, Gary. Because quacks cling to theories that don't make sense and are not, have not been verified. Uh, let's see. Blah, blah, blah. For now, Taubes thinks Nusi could evolve into something a bit more humble. Probably not. Nusi, for all intents and purposes, is dead. Uh, let's see. Blah, blah, blah. He, he, he also, he's also got more articles and books he still wants to write. I don't know what. Like, I don't know what else he can add. Uh, seriously, I don't know. This nutrition science crusade expands easily to fill all the time in my life. There can be allotted to work. So I'm going to figure out how to partition time better in the future. He better. I think he just needs to find something else to do. 
Uh, let's see. Talos found a new seat to support objective science. Now it's his own objectivity he has to defend. Well, the thing is, he doesn't have any objectivity. He committed himself to a theory, and now he's trying to defend it. And nobody really takes it seriously. It has been falsified. It doesn't work. So let's move on. So what, are, what can we learn from this? One, never subscribe to a theory or ideology. As soon as you realize that something is false, just get rid of it and move on. Don't, don't marry yourself to bad ideas. Um, second thing is the carbohydrate insulin hypothesis is false. It's, it's just not a good model of obesity. Never was. The JAMA article, I was looking at that JAMA article that came out. I think they conducted it at uh, Stanford. Not too far from here. But um, it was there was literally no difference at all between high carb, low carb. Now, I don't know what else Taubes needs to finally concede that his hypothesis failed. But it's hard to do that when you've sold you know millions of copies of your books that promote this one theory and now all the good research is showing that it's false that must be tough i feel bad for gary in a way anyway i hope you enjoyed this article review more to come in the future good night